Okay guys, without any further distraction, I will come to the point straight away. This is another blockbuster video on Unplugged TV Australia. Welcome back to the show. So guys, let me tell you what we know right now. See, when we use the dog here, it shows us 38 ampere hours, which is 100% of the available capacity. This is what we always knew about it. Even the battery has 40 ampere hours capacity. We have only 38 ampere hours available. So the BMU does not know about these two ampere hours difference. And we always thought this is the top buffer, which is not accessible. And again, before we get into details, I just want to point out again, the dog is not making up these numbers, not calculating any of these numbers. It's just showing the numbers which are available on the CAN bus of the vehicle. So these are the true figures the BMU works with. Because I know some of you still say, oh, the dog is reading, calculating wrong. It's not, it's not what the computer sees inside the car and all this kind of stuff, you know? But no, this is exactly what is coming from the car. It is not making anything up. So we always thought these two ampere hours between 38 and 40 ampere hours or between 44 and 46 ampere hours on the 2090 model, respectively, we always thought these two ampere hours are the top buffer to prolong battery life. So, and now here comes the shocking truth. 38 ampere hours or 44 ampere hours is not 100%. 40 ampere hours are 100%. And this clearly shows the BMU is wrong calibrated. All vehicles showing 38 ampere hours as 100% need to go back to the workshop. All these BMUs are wrong calibrated. All these cars are seeing a steep decline in state of health. All these cars having a fast drop of state of health. 38 ampere hours is an uncalibrated BMU. And it shows only the factory default setting of the BMU. This is a fixed value inside the BMU. This has nothing to do with anything in your battery. This is only what the BMU starts with after a reset. And clearly we have seen this so many times now when owners brought their cars to their dealerships and a battery reset has been carried out. And of course the BMU went back to 38 ampere hours, which is 100%. And we always assumed this is 100% because this is the maximum the BMU shows us. But this is only the factory default setting of the BMU. So we now can easily identify the wrong and incomplete work Mitsubishi has carried out on all these vehicles. A reset on the BMU just by its own does not make any sense at all. So and here is where the whole problem starts. The following information I give you are all coming from Gerard, who was the first owner here in Australia who got a new battery in his PHEV and also the triple procedure carried out on his car. He was able to look into the code of the microcontroller inside the car, which we call the BMU. And the BMU is a relative dumb device. It is nowhere as smart as we thought it is. So from factory default, the BMU has no idea of the true capacity of the battery. And it also cannot determine the true state of health of the battery by itself. It always needs a DB cam carried out, which puts a stamp in these upper registers of the BMU. So only the DB cam can tell the BMU what size of capacity, what size of battery is in the car. So if there is no initial DB cam by factory, the BMU is left alone with assumptions. And guys, here it comes. It applies an artificial degradation based on statistical assumptions and fixed values. And this is another thing. We know the BMU has also the CMU included. The CMU is the cell monitor unit. The cell monitor unit is basically checking on all the 80 individual cells, measuring voltage 
and temperature. The BMU is aware of all these parameters, but does not use them to calculate state of health. These measured temperatures and voltages are only being used to apply the... So these parameters are only being used for cell leveling, cell balancing and triggering the cooling. But the BMU itself does not take any of these parameters into account to calculate state of health. So how is the BMU actually calculating or estimating the state of health? So there are two fixed values and calculations happening in the BMU. The first one is called assumed deterioration ratio or this is the battery capacity secular deterioration 398 on the MUD device and this is around 0.3 percent of the capacity per month. So this is the time-based degradation the BMU applies to its calculation. And the second fixed value is the assumed cycle deterioration ratio. This is called the battery capacity cycle deterioration number 399 on the MUD device. You can see also the number 397 on the MUD device showing the actual figure. And this is exactly the same figure as we have on the dog on the left most screen yeah leftmost screen this is the total this is the usage in kiloamp hours which is exactly what the mud shows on its number 397 and this cycle degradation is around one percent every 6200 ampere hours used by the battery with used, I mean this is calculated as a sum of charge and discharge. And you can find this on your dog in the battery condition tab. Just above the birthday cake, we've got the sum of totally used ampere hours as a figure. It also shows up here in the leftmost screen of the dog. So the only calculation the BMU does to calculate the state of health of your battery, the estimated state of health of your battery, is cycles and time. So at this stage, it does not take any other parameters into account to calculate or estimate the state of health of your battery. No voltages, no temperatures, no levels of current going in or out, nothing else. Just these two parameters, cycles and time. And Gerard could see this code inside the BMU and said, look, this BMU is very basic and it only uses these two calculations for the estimation. And no wonder the firmware in the BMU is still 1.0. The firmware has never been upgraded, updated in the BMU ever since they put the code into the microcontroller probably 10 or 12 years ago. It is still version 1.0 in the controller. There has never been any updates to the BMU directly. So from day one, the car were born with this disease. So it is now recommended that all the cars are getting a reset and a DB cam carried out to recalibrate the BMU to 40 ampere hours or to 46 ampere hours in the 2019 model. And this is the only method you can do to bring the BMU back on track and tell actually the software and tell this code, this is my actual capacity of the battery. If this is not being done from time to time, the BMU estimation will become totally inaccurate over time. So Mitsubishi Motors has now admitted that the replacement of the batteries in our cars here in Australia was so it was unnecessary and that a simple reset cell smoothing and db cam would have been sufficient to rectify this problem but because our team has put so much work now into this whole battery software degradation situation with mitsubishi they are happy to keep replacing batteries as they promised initially for our team well, this is actually pretty good because we will get our new battery here and we will have a fix for the software issue. And currently Mitsubishi Motors Australia is in talk with Mitsubishi Motors Corporation, which is basically Mitsubishi Motors Japan. And they have requested to get the factory 
workflow diagram the car goes through before it leaves the factory. So we would like to know what kind of processes the car goes through when it's been built and when the BMU is calibrated to the battery. So we assume there, there is no actual processing, there's no, there's no procedures being carried out on these cars at all. The BMU comes from the vendor, from the manufacturer, which is not Mitsubishi. It's fully reset, it goes into the car and that's it. And because the BMU does not get any calibration, we see all these cars, older and new ones, plummeting down in state of health, showing a huge degradation of the battery and also showing pretty much the same degradation within all these cars. Regardless, regardless how these cars are being treated, how these cars are being charged or being used, all these degradation curves we see on the dog are pretty much the same. So guys, all these data and information Gerard found while looking into the BMU of his car have now been submitted to Mitsubishi Motors Australia. And of course we keep working closely with them together, providing them with information, with data, with experience we have with a new battery and the trivial procedure being carried out. And I cannot thank Gerard enough for looking into all this coding and providing this information to us. And I'm more than happy to share this with you guys through this video. But all the credit does not go to me. I'm just talking to the camera, the information he gave us. All the credit of all this information, of all this work goes 99.9% .9 to Gerard. So again, Gerard, thank you so much for providing this information, for looking into this. And we are also hoping that Mitsubishi Motors Corporation, MMC, will update all the dealerships worldwide, not only for the procedure to replace a battery, but also for the annual service of these PHEVs, of these cars. Because quite frankly, it is very obvious that the battery and the software maintenance will become a service item in the future. Which is uh, totally fine. The car goes into the dealerships anyway once a year to get serviced. So why not include the reset, cell smoothing and the B-cam once a year anyway in the service. <sighs> so guys, so far it looks like we've got a vaccine for the PHEV, but not a cure. And, and this can only be resolved if MMC provides an update for the actual firmware. Which, which I personally doubt they will do. I don't think they will spend any more time and money in older PHEVs. They are aware now of the problem and they may be looking into new code for the BMU in future vehicles. But for these older cars, I cannot see them providing any further um, firmware updates for the BMU. I mean, this would be a huge recall for all PHEVs worldwide and also a big effort considering a DB cam can take up to three days. So at the moment, the cure Well, so at the moment you can only bring your car back to the dealership to get the vaccination for the PHEV. We, we don't know about any outcomes between Mitsubishi Motors Australia and MMC at the moment. From what we heard, the, they are not likely to provide any fix for this problem. Even they now know what the problem is. So these are the information I have for you today. To sum this all up, every car showing 38 ampere hours or 44 ampere hours has 100% capacity in the PHEV watchdog, has an uncalibrated BMU, and it needs to go back to the dealership to calibrate it correctly with a reset, a cell smoothing, and a DB cam afterwards. And because your battery is already older, it most likely will not show 40 ampere hours as 100%. So don't be afraid, this is totally fine because we are still having the natural degradation of the battery, of course, of the cells here. The main focus 
sits on this calibration of the BMU code to the actual battery capacity. Okay guys, so far this longer than expected video again. <laughs> I'm, I've got another very interesting video coming up, maybe one of the next ones I'm doing. I have some photos and information from one of our team members here from Hunter. He was the person who got his car vaccinated at the headquarter in Adelaide. And he took some interesting photos of the MUD device before the actual battery was replaced and the BMU was reset and also afterwards. And we've got both photo series here and I'm more than happy. I was just in conversation with him today and he said, yeah, just go ahead, use all these photos in your videos. They are published anyway already. So I'm more than happy to put this all together for it to an interesting video. And I can show you exactly how wrong we were with the assumption 38 ampere hours is 100% of the available capacity. This is coming up in one of the next shows, so stay tuned. And if you haven't, click the subscribe button, subscribe, subs click the red button down there and the bell notification so you are getting notified when something happens on this channel. And guys, still there is heaps of stuff. Oh, this camera is hot. There's heaps of stuff coming up on this channel. So this is not the end. This is just the beginning. Okay, guys, so far, I need to put this down again, it's so hot. Okay, guys, so far, as always, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all your support. This is Andy from Unplugged TV, Australia, signing off. We will see us in the next video for sure. You stay charged and talk to you guys soon. Please leave all your comments down below in the description so we can start the conversation. Okay, thanks again guys. See you then. Bye bye.